Shalom, I'm John Carney Roth. I'm Abdon A. Hill. And we want to thank you for joining us today with Through the Elders, I of the Elders Discussion Series. We're really hoping that today is going to be an interesting taking a look at the mark of Cain, just exactly what that is. I, I want to start off first, Anthony, by saying that I found um, something very interesting when I was looking on YouTube about this subject. First of all, you can't really find hardly, I only found a handful of teachings, believe it or not, mm -hmm. on the what is the mark of Cain. Now, there may have been more somewhere deeper in the list but I didn't find it, you know. Uh, I didn't go all the way to the end, but I went quite a ways. I only found about five, and it was kind of ambiguous, except for one guy who I think has it correct. And he says, you know, when you look into the scriptures, you find there is no explanation by Yahweh what the mark of Cain actually is. Mm -hmm. So when you look into the Hebrew, it says it's an omen. It's a sign. Okay, but an omen and a sign can be a, a physical mark of some attribute that is placed on a person or could be a spiritual dimension. And so I think the danger is, is that when you start focusing on a physical mark, you wind up sometimes sacrificing the real meaning of what the spiritual mark is of the mark of Cain. Mm -hmm. In other words, his nature. And, and that's what I think we really want to focus on today is what are the attributes that are that mark the nature of Cain mm -hmm. so that we can empower ourselves to understand the shortcomings that we have. And I want to say this up front that whether you're a believer or you're not a believer, we all have the nature of Cain in us. Mm -hmm. We have it at varying degrees and so forth. And some of us are just blatantly have accepted the the nature of Cain altogether and have no desire to want to go in the way of righteousness whatsoever. And so with that being said, today we're going to kind of focus more on the spiritual attributes or, or, or characteristics of, of the nature of Cain as the mark. Mm -hmm. And I think that we can see into the New Testament, if I can remember to cover it, that we're given that kind of an explanation in the New Testament about Cain, where it says, and they went by the way of Cain. Mm -hmm. And when you look up the way, what it means is the course of action that they took. Mm -hmm. In other words, they were duplicating, they were replicating exactly what Cain had done, but this is now in the end times. Mm -hmm. So... Although it's interesting to know if Yahweh had put a physical mark on him somehow, and I heard one guy say there was a mark on the forehead, there's nothing in Scripture mm -hmm. that you could prove that that's the case. Right. However, when we get to the end of this discussion today, we are going to address a mark in a physical sense mm -hmm. and a spiritual sense that takes you to another place. So with that being said, uh, that's kind of my opening in, in getting this thing going. So whatever you want to feed into this, uh, you got the floor. Well, praise Yahweh. Uh, for me, uh, with my experience and my relationship with you, when you um, came up with this subject, and I'm thinking, you know, because I understand you as looking at stuff from a prophetic nature. Right. You know, and I'm just not built or geared up in that in that um realm and so for me when Yahweh uh found me he made it personal with me so every discussion that we have I tend to make it personal that I can understand the power that it took from Yahweh to deliver me from from all kind of bondage, and so this subject here, it 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 hit me with a, a phrase of recognizing authority, uh, coming under authority, because that was for me that was the mark that was on me. It was hard for me to submit to authority, and I wanted to make things work in the way that I wanted them to work. And regardless of how 
somebody tried to uh, warn me of the consequences, I was determined to make it work and get the result that were in my mind that I wanted and you was going to accept me like this or else, mm -hmm. you know. And so it, it this subject, it really was personal to me. So when I read to the scriptures, it took me to the on this journey back to when my journey began. And I was able to see uh, and he gave me this this scripture that kind of uh, verified it for me. Uh, uh, Paul wrote about all scripture that was written aforetime was written for our learning that we through patience and Comf and hoping the scriptures might find comfort. And the more I find out about myself, the more thankful I become. And so for me, this is a, a opportunity that if anybody can bear witness and just see how far that Yahweh has bought them, then you can see the work that he is doing to erase this mark out of your life. Baruch Hashem. Mm -hmm. So Yahweh had put this, this uh, topic on my heart several months ago. Mm -hmm. And then about a week or so back, whatever it was, when we were talking, I really felt very strongly like he was impressing upon me, okay, enough is enough. It's time to deal with this subject. And lo and behold, uh, this week, at least in this, well, actually not just in this country, I'll go into this in a second, but in this country, we've been going through a lot of upheavals, politically, social unrest. Uh, we had this um, shooting of these children in Tennessee by, um, uh, what do you call it? A transsexual or whatever the person was. I, I don't know that much about it. Um, but ironically, as we're filming this today, mm -hmm. it was announced the other day that the LGBTQ community somewhere in the country, I don't know exactly where, um, is holding a rally. And it's about bearing guns, and it's called the Day of Vengeance, if I have it right. And the theme of it is anyone who does not agree with our lifestyle is considered to be our enemy. And we have a right to defend ourselves and shoot them if we have to. If I have that right, that's what I believe. Mm -hmm. And that's a demonstration that's going on today in Yahweh's Holy Sabbath in a nation that was blessed by uh, Yahweh by an Abrahamic blessing, which is now running out on this country. And mm -hmm. I think that's the main reason why you're seeing this country is going into this downfall very quickly, because those blessings are being removed because we're becoming so immoral, which is the hallmark point of this whole uh, discussion today, which is the mark of Cain. Choose your sacrifice or it eventually will choose you. Mm -hmm. So when we come into this world, we come into this world with the idea from Yahweh's perspective that you're supposed to be a sacrifice. Now you can accept the sacrifice that was designed for you, which means you're to become a sacrifice yourself to honor Yahweh, or you become a sacrificial uh uh, person for Satan himself mm -hmm. and whatever his agenda is. So there's two marks. The Yahweh has marked his people and their attributes for that. And then Satan has marked his people and they have attributes for that. Mm -hmm. So the story of Cain comes down to that Yahweh was telling Cain that you have to be a master over your own sins. And today what you're seeing is in these groups that I'm talking about, oh, by the way, and Israel had a whole bunch of LBGT, several thousand, demonstrating in Israel the other day, and they almost stormed Netanyahu's house because they want to overthrow the government. Hmm. So there seems to be this rise in the LGBT community around the world where they're becoming violent now. You know, they used to be in the the closet, so to speak, they came out of the closet, that got tolerated, and now we're getting to a point where they're starting to rise up and they're starting to ex ex exercise their so-called rights to now oppress other people who don't agree with them. Mm -hmm. Well, to me, that's the mark of Cain mm -hmm. because it's self-indulgence, it's based on hatred for other people, which comes from self-hatred of yourself, 
and you can read that in Romans chapter one. You know, it goes through that whole. We're not gonna we're not gonna bombard everybody with a ton of scriptures today, mm -hmm. but we're gonna get into some interesting scriptures today, and we're gonna elaborate on it. But one of these days, we're all going to have to make a decision about what are we going to do with our particular situation. Yes. And I was watching yesterday a well-known person on, uh, t not TV, but they have a, a podcast. They have their own network. And uh, he was saying that we need to be careful not to be drawn into all this stuff. And we need to, print, uh, we need to repent before God. Okay, well, that sounds all well and good, but the bottom line is, how do you define that repentance? How do you get rid of the nature of Cain? What does that look like if you really want to be right with Yahweh mm -hmm. and with Yeshua? Okay, well, if I was be able to talk to this man who I admire this man for what he stands for. It's just that uh, most of all these people, I say all these people I hear like that, they don't go to the far end of the spectrum of how do you really define that? Mm -hmm. Because if I was to say you have to keep the Ten Commandments, well, now you're going to have a, a problem with that person. Right. Because they're not going to see it that way. Well, you know what I'm going to say? What I'm going to say is, according to what Yahweh says in Scripture, basically, let the beatings continue. Mm-hmm. See, these beatings are coming on us because we're immoral. As the, I'm just speaking for this nation right now. Mm -hmm. We're immoral, and we don't want to give up our lifestyle. And a lot of people I talk to, they work. You know, you remember that old song from the 80s? Um, uh, Working for the Weekend by Loverboy or whatever. I forget what it was. It's a catchy tune. But it was about working all week long. And then mm. when Friday at 5 o'clock comes, the whistles and the bells go off. It's mm. now time to go party for the weekend. You know? Mm. So you go out to your favorite uh, bar and grill. You sit with your buddies and your friends. You have a little food. You drink beer. You watch sports on the 500 TVs that are surrounding, you know, the whole thing. And I'm not against sitting down mm -hmm. to enjoy yourself a little bit. But this is the nature of what Americans have relegated their life to, which is just partying it up. But the party is now over. The signs are all around us that our society is falling apart. The government is becoming more tyrannical now. They're changing laws left and right. Look what they did to the ex-president the other day. They indicted him based on no proof of anything. I'm not going to get into that about being for Trump, against Trump. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying it's now become clear on both sides of the aisle that what they did is they broke all precedents in the history of this country of breaking the law to establish a new law. Mm -hmm. And so this is what's going on with the mark of Cain. The hatred, the anger, the vitriol, the revenge, the pride, all this stuff you want to talk about is now about punishing everybody else for the way that I feel. Mm -hmm. And we're going to get into some of this when we psychologically start breaking down this storyline of Cain and how he got to be the way he was and what the consequences were and Yahweh's um, remedy for what how he could have got out of that. So the question that I have for the people out there is how long are you going to postpone your current state your of lifestyle that you're indulging in before you finally say, okay, enough is enough. Because I heard a lot of people say, enough is enough. I'm done. This is it. I can't take it no more. Okay, but what does that mean? Do you have the answer? So far, I'm not hearing anybody with the actual answer on how to counteract what is happening to them. Mm -hmm. And what is it they exactly they got to do? Just repenting, saying I want to repent, doesn't mean anything. Because that's different for every person. And so what we want to get to here today is explain what real repentance really looks like. And that there are signs or a mark that marks that kind of person as is di diametrically opposite for those who have the mark of Cain or the nature of Cain, we can say it that way. Mm -hmm. And so there are two marks in this end time that we're dealing with. And so I was going through uh, some scriptures and I forgot all about this set of scriptures we're going to read right now. Mm -hmm. 
I didn't remember that I even had these, and I've translated it from the Hebrew into the English uh, in the red, and well, people will be able to see this on the screen in a minute, where it's a prophecy about rebellious Gentiles in the end times who are going to accept their appointed sacrifice. Mm -hmm. At some point, Yahweh has already written this, this is going to happen. Now, could it be that this is the bride-to-be, the woman that goes to the place of safety to get cleaned up for three and a half years because she has so much Babylon and this world inside her that she has to be cleaned up before she can marry the Messiah or not? I don't know. I know it's going to be a mixed multitude. These are Gentiles. There may be a lot of Jews and modern-day Israelites that are mixed in with all this. I don't know. where It doesn't really go that far, and I'm not going to expound beyond the, the concept that it's a speculation. But anyway, in 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 41 through 50, let's just we're going to read through this, and then we'll come back. It says, Moreover, concerning a foreigner who is adulterous, who is not of your people, Mm -hmm. which would be Israel, right? A tribe not of Israel, but has come from a far country of your name that has honor, authority, and character's sake that is motivated for that purpose. I think that's very interesting. I'd like to come back to that. Mm -hmm. Verse 42, for they will hear to the point of obedience of your great name and your strong hand, which leads in a direction of power, and your outstretched arm when he comes and prays and intercedes toward this temple. Here in heaven, your dwelling place, and do according to all for which the foreigner who is adulterous calls to you, that all peoples of the earth may know that your name, which is a mark of an individual for honor, authority, and character. Mm -hmm. There's a lot to digest in this. Mm -hmm. And fear morally of you as do your people Israel and that they may know and recognize that this temple which I have built is called by your name. When your people in verse 44 go out to battle in warfare against their enemy, a hating adversary, wherever you send them, and when they pray with supplication, asking for mercy, deliverance, and salvation to Yahweh toward the city which you have chosen and the temple which I have built in your name, then hear in heaven their prayer and their supplication, which is gracious favor, and maintain their cause, which is a judicial verdict that comes from the divine law of Torah. Mm -hmm. When they sin against you, for there is no one that does not sin, and you come and become angry to the point of enragement with them and deliver them to the enemy, and they take them captive to the land of the enemy far and or near. So we messed up. Mm -hmm. Our enemies have taken us captive. We're now in another land, and we're suffering, okay? And they come to their senses. Yet when they come to themselves back to where they started in their minds in the land where they were carried captive and repent and make supplication to be moved to favor by petitioning to you in the land of those who took them captive saying, we have sinned and done wrong. We have committed wickedness. And when they return to the starting point to you with all their heart, with understanding, with all their soul in the land of their enemies who led them away captive and pray with supplication towards you, their land which you gave to their fathers, the city which you have chosen, and the temple which I have built for your name, which is a mark of an individual for honor, authority, and character. Then here in heaven, your dwelling place, their prayer, and their supplication, and maintain their cause through the divine law of Torah. And forgive your people who have sinned through rebellious revolt against you and all their transgressions, which they have transgressed as to break away from just authority against you and grant them compassion as cherished a fetus in the womb before those who took them captive, that they may have compassion with love on them. Mm -hmm. now, that's a lot to digest in there. But basically, at the end of the day, there's going to be an end time group of Gentiles who are going to become convicted mm -hmm. and they're going to break away from this system of corruption that we see going on right now. And they're not going to want the mark of Cain or the nature of Cain anymore. So I'm going to leave it over to you because I know that you want to go ahead and um, 
point number one, you want to talk about whose prayers were heard, verses 41 through 42. Yes, for, like I said in the opening comments, he made it uh, personal. He began to show me in the ways that he made it personal because I had a prayer when um, I got in trouble. And that prayer was for him. In my, in my mind, ever no way I was going to be forgiven. Uh, it, even it's exonerated from this, this trouble I had gotten into. So I said, I'm going to die in this place. But if I die, just let me die having a right relationship with you. Lead me to somebody that's not going to pity pat with me, not going to speak soft to me. It's going to just tell me the truth, whether I can take it or not, because I want to be right when I meet you. And so when Solomon was praying for the people of Israel and then in his prayer, he was asking Yahweh, even if a, a, a foreigner would pray to this temple, now, I had no knowledge of the way that they do traditionally now turn to the east and pray towards Jerusalem. Uh, but Yahweh was showing me that his Jerusalem is up in heaven with him right. and the temple is up there. Mm -hmm. And I was literally praying toward that place and he heard me, you know, and the person that he sent to me was really a strict of a strict nature. And he began to come. But finally, as the years passed by and I was able to meet this person face to face and he literally told me that Yahweh did not hear my prayers. And that's why I'm making this personal, because it's people out there that are really crying out to be delivered from some sin or from some stronghold there, knowing that somewhere you heard about this great name of Yahweh and how compassionate he is. And for me, I'm a living witness of his mercy and his compassion that you can cry out and he do hear your prayer because somebody wiser than any man walking in this earth prayed for you. And Yahweh acknowledged that prayer and he will acknowledge your prayer and direct your path along the way. But that enemy, that seed, that's already planted in the world is there to hinder you and to strike you. So through much evidence, Yahweh proved to me that he heard, but this teaching I was about to receive was teaching me that he didn't hear me, that I needed that person to pray for me. But I'm already delivered at that point, but the seed that's in me can't allow me to see the deliverance that I had already received. So I'm still in the same condition and I'm lost. And he began to show me, uh, I don't want to get ahead, but basically right there, that's my first point about receiving Solomon's prayer for you and acknowledging that Yahweh does hear your cries even if you are a foreigner, not just for his people. Baruch Hashem. Um, you know, I, I've met a lot of people over the years that are in a place in their life where they're in a lot of trouble. What you were mm -hmm. saying is bringing back memories of a lot of these people. And the, the vast majority of the people that I've experienced with this with over my 40 plus years now in this faith, you plead with them and you plead with them and you plead with them and you're hoping they're at the end of their rope and you've got some sort of a leverage that they want to cross over and change their life. Mm -hmm. And they just won't do it. They just won't pull the trigger and do it. And what it shows me is that the seed of Cain or the nature of Cain in that pride is so deep and so ingrained 
that unless a person, unless a person is really truly at the very end of the ropes, and it, that reminds me of your story so much as you told it over the years while being in prison. Mm -hmm. um, unless that desire is so great to want to get right with Yahweh, mm -hmm. it ain't gonna happen. The other way is. Yahweh, for whatever reason, he decides to have mercy on a person in that situation and decides to open up his heart and grant him repentance directly in that way, then it would happen for that person. Now, then at that point, it's the burden of that person to continue on and not fall away from the faith. But my point is, is that the vast majority of people that I meet just can't pull the trigger. I just can't go that far. I know what you're saying is right, and I know that's the remedy for me, but I just can't do it. I won't do it. And there's a whole bunch of reasons why, but at the end of the day, that's a mark. That's a sign that the nature of Cain is so deep in that person that they're just staying in a state of being unregenerate. Mm -hmm. They can't be regenerated. And uh, it's very sad to watch people deteriorate. And I see them, and then I, I might bump into them, you know, a year or two later. I don't even recognize them anymore at that point. Their life has devolved into so much chaos and confusion with financial problems, family problems, relationship problems, health problems, all kinds of different problems. And it just gets worse and worse and worse. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you sit there and you look at that and you're like, how pathetic. And then you sit there and you think to yourself, at what point does this person say, I've gone too far? Something's mm -hmm. got to change. Well, this group of people decides at some point that they're going to change. And the one thing that comes out here in verse 41 is that they are motivated to come to Yahweh for the purpose of receiving honor, authority, and character. Mm -hmm. That's what it says in the Hebrew. Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not strapulating this of my own thoughts. This is what was in the Hebrew translation. And, it's for, and it's, so that's a clue. So obviously their past life is a life where they're sick and tired of it. They don't want it anymore. And they want something better. They can't take it no more. And, and, and something came into their hearing mm -hmm. that they not only understood what they were hearing, but they understood it with intelligence. Mm -hmm. well, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to just real mm -hmm. short. When I was a much younger guy and I went into business for myself, I wasn't mature in how to handle money. Mm -hmm. And I made a lot of stupid mistakes over the years and getting myself into debt and all kinds of things like that. And it took a while before I started realizing money is a tool, but you gotta you gotta handle it. There's a law that regulates how it gets used in a righteous and an unrighteous manner. Mm -hmm. And it took me a long time to figure out how that actually works, because I was never trained in that. You know, I, I'm a young guy that came up in the 50s and the 60s picking up Coke bottles off the side of the road and bring it to the 7-Eleven and get a yeah, two cent. Uh, yeah. deposit returns mm -hmm. so I go buy a candy bar or something you know yeah. so that's the extent of my understanding mm -hmm. of money but people don't know how to handle the situations in their life and it's gotten so bad so obviously this group of people says that's it I want a change in my life I want honor I want authority and I want character that doesn't fail me and that's it that's Yahweh that's his name it brings I heard of him there's nothing. This is the person that I want to be like. You exactly. Know? You want to emulate. And, yeah. and, and, and there's nobody that I can look around that has these attributes but him. Right. Um, let's see here. You also want to go through verse 43 through 45, mm -hmm. having the power to believe and trust. Yes. <laughs> having the power to believe and trust. So what do you want to? Elaborate about and that. that for me, I was thinking on the point when Yahweh told Cain that sin lacked at the door. But 
he can overcome it. But when we look at the physical and the in the physical around us, it seems impossible for us to overcome certain things. So we give in to that thing that no matter what Yahweh says to us, it can't happen. That's natural. That's natural for man to feel that way. And I've I had that spirit that I'm just looking at the circumstances. I'm still sitting in, in prison, so Yahweh couldn't truly have forgiven me. But he's taken me through this process, through this valley, showing me how he's taking cords off me, but I can't physically see it because the only cord I can see is I'm in prison mm -hmm. and I'm still crying out, please accept me. Please accept my sacrifice. Please accept these prayers. But I'm sitting here and the doors hasn't opened to set me free. And I'm not taking it as an opportunity to trust in him so that I can believe that all things truly are going to work out for my good. It's going to work in my favor at the end. But I'm here today to tell somebody, to bear witness to somebody that he can work it out if you just believe and trust in him. He's proven through your life what he's delivered you from, whether it's a sickness, whether it's a debt, whether it's a heartbreak. And you are sitting here and you're watching this message today and listening to this discussion. He's brought you through that to this place. And if you're dealing with it at this moment, he's given you the strength to sit here and listen and hear that he's the one you can trust him because he has the honor. He has the character. He has the power to do what he say he's going to do. Can't nobody prove him to be a liar. And so this 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 subject is personal to me. And I can look at it because the enemy is so diabolically clever that he can make this thing, this battle, uh, it's really a spiritual battle in a religious battle. Uh, I was telling May this morning about the story of, of two kings, king of Israel, king of Judah. And they had this nation that he wanted to go out in war against, but he needed the other king's help. And so the king asked him to get the prophecy and let them speak to Yahweh. And he bought all of his prophets. And they told him to go, he'll prevail. But he had already been prophesied too by the prophet of Yahweh that don't go up. If you go up, you're going to lose and you're going to die. And so the king, the other king, I said, don't you have one more that in Israel that might prophesy a little different? He said, yeah, that's one, but he never prophesied anything good concerning yeah. me that's what the spirit of Cain was doing to me no you done done too much there's no way but the the person I heard about told me that there's nothing too hard for him that if you just come and you ask and he'll give it to you he didn't tell you had to be in a certain condition to receive it from he said just come with this type of heart and attitude and i'll grant it to you but in the physical it didn't seem like it i don't want to get uh too far above the other stuff points i want to get into but this is basically the walk he's bringing me to and i want to just share that in hopes that it will strengthen somebody that if you just believe and trust, he'll grant you your heart's desire. Baruch Hashem, um, that's the problem, is the trust. Mm -hmm. We're so used to being trusting in ourselves and our own capabilities, which in the case I'm talking about has actually got us into a lot of trouble. Mm -hmm. And we don't have the solution to get out. But Yahweh has the solution, like you said. But to give up trust in the self mm -hmm. and allow Yahweh or Yahshua to be able to lead you out in a way that he knows is best and do that by faith, that's a horse of a different color. Yes. And to this world, that's foolishness. Mm -hmm. Well, then you relegated yourself to continuing in your foolishness because you just want to hold on to your agenda and maintain that mark of Cain, the seed of Cain in you, which got you there in the first place. So... 
it's an insane state of mind, to put it mildly, that you think somehow that what got you into trouble is the very thing that's going to get you out. Well, if that's the case, how come many years later you're in more deeper trouble than you were before? So giving up the self, which was a hard thing for Cain himself to be able to do, is a very difficult thing. And, you know, I always say that everybody has their own rock bottom, you mm -hmm, know. Mm -hmm. But the bottom line is I've seen many people that to this day, many years later, still haven't hit rock bottom. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're more... They're more rebellious than they ever were before. Mm -hmm. And I feel bad for those people. Um, so going back to verse 43 here, how do you get honor, authority, and character? Which is what Yahweh's name is comprised of. That's the nature of Yahweh's name, mm -hmm. is honor, authority, and character. Mm -hmm. Well, character is doing the right thing, mm -hmm. being righteous. Mm -hmm. What does Yahweh say? Be righteous as I am righteous, mm -hmm. you know? Well, in order to do righteousness, you got to know what righteousness says. Yes. Unfortunately, in this world today and in the world's religions today, mm -hmm. and I'm primarily speaking in Christianity and Catholicism, um, they don't believe in the righteousness that comes from the commandments. Mm -hmm. But there is no other source where you can go to find that righteousness. There's no other place. So if you don't know what righteousness is and you don't know how to define it, how do you know in a given situation how you're supposed to do it? How are you supposed to hear from the spirit of Yahweh mm -hmm. saying you're in this situation, this predicament right now, How this is how you got to deal with it? Well, if the righteousness is not in you because you don't understand it, how are you going to be able to hear the spirit of truth that's telling you how to implement the spirit of truth when the spirit of truth is not in you because you reject it? Mm -mm. That's a problem. Yes. That's a problem. So the character means that you're a person of moral law which mm -hmm. is what the commandments are. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about the whole Ten Commandments. Right. I'm not talking about the last six that the church indulges in today. Mm -hmm. You got the first four commandments, which are the great commandments. Are they kind as to indulge in them? Yeah, they don't. <laughs> it's filled with paganism. And that is sin. Mm -hmm. And so therefore you're defiled and your rebelliousness to get away from that means you have that level of the mark of Cain in you, mm -hmm. the nature of Cain that does not want to submit to Yahweh as he's saying to you, this is the kind of sacrifice I want you to be. And that's being rejected. Mm -hmm. So if you don't choose the sacrifice willingly that's being offered to you, then the, sac the, the sacrifice is going to choose you. Mm -hmm. By default, that's what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. You're going to fall into that category. So when you start keeping the commandments and you start learning about righteousness and then you begin to implement these principles in everyday life and you see how it plays out, what does Yahshua say in Matthew chapter 5? He who teaches and does the commandments of Yahweh mm -hmm. is it's called great, great in mm -hmm. the kingdom of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. And the ones that won't do it and won't teach it are called less than least by those in the kingdom of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. So we have another scripture. I don't remember where it is now. I didn't write it down. But it was saying that in the New Testament, it was saying that basically when you're keeping the commandments and you're developing this character, Yahweh then imparts to you the authority to rebuke the nations. Mm -hmm. How are you going to rebuke the nations if you don't have the moral law inside of you, where your conscious mind agrees to go along with that morality, along with the inner spirit man, mm -hmm. so that the two are in harmony with each other and not repelling against each other? You can't, you can't judge something if you don't. I can't go into a court of law before a judge on and defend somebody or myself in a court case in which I don't know civil law. Let's say it's civil. Yeah. I don't know civil law. I don't know how to arg argue that in front of a judge. Well, how are you going to get into the kingdom and judge the nations 
if you don't understand what the commandments say and what the moral law says. You can't. Mm -hmm. You have nothing in which to open up a book and say, this is what Yahweh says about this, and this is how it has to be implemented. Mm -hmm. You're not qualified to judge the nation. So you can't be a king. You can't be a priest. You can't be a magistrate in the king. You can't be anything because mm -hmm. you're not qualified. Right. But you got to give up the nature of Cain in order to attain that, and it takes time. So when you keep the commandments, what it's showing you as part of the nature of Yahweh is you operate in a spirit of authority. Mm -hmm. Now, the nature of Cain, the mark of Cain operates in a spirit of authority also, but it's, it's in a destructive sense in this world, which is what a lot of people are going in by in that way. Mm -hmm. Then what happens is you get a crown of honor because you're upholding Yahweh's commandments and the authority that you're executing, which is delegated authority from Yahweh to you in a given situation. Mm -hmm. And then when you execute it and Yahweh's pleased with that and he brings it to a fruition in which it's to your benefit, he settles the matter, then he's honored and Yahshua is honored. Because you carried it out exactly the way you were instructed to do it. Mm -hmm. You can't do that from a position of ignorance. Yes. You can't. Mm -hmm. It's just not possible. So I wanted to touch on verse 43 there about honor, authority, and character, because that's how you define it. And that's what these Gentiles want in their life. And that's what they're seeking after in the name of the Father. Mm -hmm. Okay. So... Um, you want to go up until 45. Did you go to 45? Yeah, all that covered from you covered that already. Through 45, okay, yes. so uh, I don't okay, so from 45 or 46 on, 40, mm -hmm. you wanted to elaborate on verse 46 onward. Mm -hmm. It out for me. <laughs> uh, I think I, I I don't know. Maybe it's a reason I tend to personalize so so much, you know, because I want my life to be an open book, you know. But at the same time, I want to be able to recognize when there's a moat in my eye, a uh, beam in my eye, before I can try to tell somebody what's what's in their eyes, you know, and just by the nature of our uh, title, through the eyes, through the eyes. It's what I'm seeing through my eyes, through my experience. And when I, when I talk a, a, a lot of time to different people, they can see actually a lot of stuff I'm saying, but to uh, surrender to it is their battle because it's something that's in the way that seems more pressing or more uh, uh, stronger than what, what they're seeing in me. And faith is not about sight. Mm -hmm. Faith is about believing. And so when, when, when we look around and, we, and, we, and when I look through these uh, different sub, uh, scriptures here, I see that Yahweh saying, whenever you return to him. Now, there's a teaching out there. You can never lose what he give you. Right. right. <laughs> but at this point here, so far we've been reading when somebody prays to you. But even your own people, once you were made a people, and if you do something wrong and you cast them out of your house, out of your country, out of their land, which you giving them, and they're in another land, they, they got opportunity to return, but it's something they got to do to get back there. Now, this spirit of Cain has got a teaching that nothing you got to do. He's done it all for you. But I don't know of anybody that been written in the book that all of us who we 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 say with our lips that this book these words are the words of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Yahweh say this was the wisest man and he gave him wisdom. And that there was nobody wiser than him. It's been some wise people but there was nobody wiser than King Solomon. And King Solomon say you 
you better pray if you want to get back to where you were. So in order to get back to, to get back to somewhere, you had to already been there. So this spirit of Cain teaching is he can't do nothing. He can't kick you out. He can't take what he's given from you. Well, he took the land from them. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And and it's so this the tricks of I'm telling you, he's so clever that he he sets all different stuff. Um it's a quote I say, oh, my enemy, even though we're enemy, I got an enemy who is your enemy, so now we are friends. <laughs> yeah. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> so we can fight together and we can put that one down. But I don't I'm not in agreement with you. You are my enemy too. So at what point we gonna come back and we're gonna reconcile? So it presumably in captivity, it seems like okay. Yahweh put them in captivity so I could treat them any kind of way. But when they treated them bad and they prayed to Yahweh, Yahweh came in there and he punished them for punishing them. They was already under punishment. So how much more can we punish somebody if Yahweh is already punishing them? Hmm. It's just the deception. Well, uh, but but that you see, that right there is mm -hmm. exactly what the nature of somebody who has the nature of Cain mm -hmm. would do. Well, he's not being punished enough. I'm going to take out my retribution on them now. That's what we oh, do in religion. And, and actually, in, religion. In, in the New Testament, I think it's in in Jude. It's, it, it's for this reason. Mm -hmm. He says there, and that's why Michael didn't um, contend with Satan about the bones of Moses. Mm -hmm. He didn't bring a reviling accusation against him. Because... You got to be careful when Yahweh is judging somebody and he's enacting the punishment on them. And you think that you got so much righteousness in your Cain nature that you're going to add to that. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what the nature of Cain would do. Oh, no, that ain't good enough. I want to add to that. He deserves a whole lot more punishment than that. And if I don't get the recognition above you getting the recognition, I'm going to yeah. kill you. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I'm going to do away with you. Mm hmm. So, you know, in this set of verses, I also what I'm getting out of that is, is that we can be restored to Yahweh and somewhere along the line, we make a mistake. Mm -hmm. Let's say it was even intentional. We indulge in something we shouldn't have indulged in. And now our enemy has taken us captive to another land. Mm -hmm. Like you said, it's never too late. You are in prison. And so you called out to Yahweh and he delivered you from that. And it, that's what it's talking about here. It's never too late. The problem is humbling yourself and recognizing the nature of Cain got me again. And taking your punishment. Right. And take your punishment. Take your punishment. Be content. And you know what? It, it, even with that, I've seen people who do stuff. I know one person in particular for many years mm -hmm. who gets away with murder for doing this. Stuff. I said, I don't know how you get away with it. I don't know how Yahweh lets you get away with this all this time. I don't know when Yahweh all of a sudden one day says, OK, enough is enough. This person, he knows what he's doing. And I let him get off all these times over the years. But now is the day of reckoning. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to let you get away with it now. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, you're playing with fire, man. <laughs> you, you're really tempting Yahweh with this behavior indulging all the time. And yet you claim to believe in Yeshua. Yeah, you it know? has to break you down through your punishment, uh, through your um, sentence. I said sentence. Correction. They call it correction Correct. institution. Right. You have to receive correction because if you can't, receive corrections or instructions you're going to be lost and that is the nature that Cain has roaming into this earth until this day even in Yeshua time he told uh, the Pharisees that you're of your father the devil right he was a murderer from the beginning who you think he talking about right to me and my I mean right there Cain was the devil mm -hmm. uh, he's a a, a, a prototype of the devil. Exactly. Exactly. A murderer. Yeah. His seed. And so we, yeah. we're, we're, we're teaching. I don't want to hold you up. I'm going to let you get to your point real quick. Um, you're talking about the commandments and how they talk about the last six in Christianity. Uh, 
any other other religions. Uh, we can say the ones who profess, even the ones who profess to keep ten, at some point they 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 was found not to be keeping them by Yeshua Himself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I see leaders, and they put titles to the name. Some of them bishops, apostles, prophets. And they married with the knowledge show they say they have, and they found a way to divorce. Right. Well, how are you keeping the six? Because you could, Yeshua said, if you divorce and remarry while that other one is still living, then you an adulterer and you mm -hmm. cause the other one to be an adulterer. Mm -hmm. But they deceive the people and the people still follow them in their adulterous lifestyle because they stand another one up there talking about they, they married to them. So why does a person respect a leader like that? Because they don't have the knowledge of the truth. And yeah, so they their could, truth is coming from them. They're claiming that they keep the last six of the Ten Commandments. Yeah, but according to how they are taught, what the meaning of them is. And yeah, there's forgiveness so and Anthony, everything. So you're saying that our ability to rationalize on a very superficial level is gone. To believe, to believe what Yeshua said. Well, you got to be, in order to believe, you got to hear something. Yeah. So oh, you, you, they, you, you can't tell me they don't know what it says about not marrying another woman while, and divorcing the one. They read it, but they don't believe it. He so they do have the that. knowledge. Yeah. He didn't mean that like that. I got so, a reason. Again, my question is, it's kind of a baited one. Mm -hmm. Why, what would compel a person like that to stay underneath that kind of a leadership? It, for me, I'm just saying for me, I can't speak what another person, that I can be in that religion, John, if I really wanted to. If I hadn't committed to Yahweh, I committed and I've tried to keep my word best as I can. Well, we best talked I, about this. I we both how. could do that. We'd be and, making some and, big money. And <laughs> that frees me up. That frees this flesh yeah, up. Right. I'm comfortable. Right. But the, the sacrifice you talked about no, 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 no. in the beginning is something that we have to become. We have to become a living sacrifice. Mm -hmm. You know, sacrifice ain't always I kill you so that I can live. The whole sacrificial system was designed that we got to stop doing these things to innocent people. We got to stop doing these undeserving actions against people just for our fleshly benefit. We got to be able to make the keep our word, give our word and keep our word. He gave his word not for us to break ours to him. It, it's just that simple for me. But for a lot of people, I understand the struggle when you're still in the flesh and not really ready to crucify this flesh because you got to so go through some pain. A person who would sit in that situation like that, I believe, does that because their tolerance level for that defilement of a sin, you know, of a, of a law is not egregious enough for them to leave. I can go. In other words, <laughs> if, 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 if he can get away with it, that means if I decide at some point I can get away with it. I, I, I can go with it. But the, the strip, it's like it says, birds of a feather flock together. The strips is just so full because he gave Israel as an example. I right. thought I would say all strips that were written a full right. time. How many went against Yeshua himself? Right. But we today saying, oh, we could have did that. They hated him. Well, he was there. They knew about him. They were, we, we're, we could be easily in the same condition that they're in. You know, um, how many couldn't hear his words? How many leaders I'm talking about could not, didn't know that was him? And but they claim they studied him and they told him me Abraham was their father. He told him if Abraham was your father, then you know me. Yeah, right. Because we, we we And you do the works yeah, of Abraham. Uh-huh. Yeah. And so so just because they're in those positions don't mean that they know. No. And and if you somebody that don't know and come under there, they can persuade you that they know. You know? Yeah, well, the other thing too is and some of these people uh in my experience with knowing some, uh, because of the positions that they hold, 
and the respect that they have for people, mm -hmm. you tend to get a little cocky and you think that you can get away with things that the people will tolerate. Yeah. Because you know that their faith in their understanding of what is righteous behavior and what is not, is not strong enough to rebel against you and cast you out until you get yourself straightened out. They tolerate it. Yeah, I, I could tell you for a truth, um, real, I don't mind calling people out. I don't know their name, but I can call the This Calvary Chapel place down there had a real powerful minister, mm -hmm. leader. But when he got exposed, then he's only human. But when did you become well, human? When he was up there, he was a god. Yeah, you was you was yeah. You knew you was until you got caught. Mm -hmm. Well, when you was you going to take this position? Mm -hmm. You know, and so until we're caught, Cain, where's my brother? What are you doing? You taking advantage of people? Am I, what my also say is, am I my brother's keeper? Am I my brother's keeper? Right. Uh, yeah, you're supposed to be the keeper. He put you over the flock. You're the shepherd. You're supposed to care. You're supposed to be the good shepherd. And so we, we got so many examples. And so if I got a bunch of wolves in there, eventually we're going to eat everybody mm -hmm. up in there. Mm -hmm. Yep. So so all of us, we're going we gonna to prey on our little weak victims together. But eventually, after we eating everybody up, who we got to turn to for food now? Right. We're going we to eat you up now mm -hmm. before you get me. Because you got them. Now we got to get you out of the way. <sighs> and so this, this is the tricks of the enemy. Um, and he uses the scriptures to deceive you into believing he is really him. What they say he's going to do in the end? Lo, I'm here. Right. Lo, I'm over here. Hello, it's me here. And they're That's running it, all Everybody over running mm -hmm. everywhere. Mm -hmm. Everywhere they're running now. It, because yet, they won't yet stop if you, if to you, listen. If you knew... The character of Yahweh mm -hmm. and the and you had the authority of Yahweh. And the honor that you wouldn't listen to nothing what these clowns are telling. You. He's honorable, but people are listening to these clowns, mm -hmm. and and I understand it's like a used car salesman. It can sound so good, the arguments can sound so good, but you don't have enough knowledge in this cranium to measure it against what this guy's saying and saying. Hold on a second now. If I took this word and this word and I split it enough apart that I can interject my thought into that, I see that this word is actually contradicting that world. Brother, that was very creative how you did that. It, it, and it, now it became a doctrine of demon and you can't you weren't able to figure it out. John, it's really good. It's fantastic the way that they do it. it. Is. it, it there's nobody that don't do wrong. We all sin. Oh, yeah, Solomon said there's no one that don't sin, but he also told him to turn back and repent and call right. on that great name of Yahweh. So, yes, they got a point that way, but that don't give you an excuse. If you feel a conviction, acknowledge that conviction because that's the spirit of Yahweh convicting you to walk in his ways, to hear him, and he'll bring you up out of that. And you will look back and say, man, that thing didn't have yeah. much power as I gave it because it don't even scare me anymore. Right. Yeah, we'll get into a little bit more as we mm -hmm. go along. So point number four is characteristics and nature of the mark of Cain. Mm -hmm. So um, what, I want, what I wanted to bring up, these are some of the thoughts that I, I had that I kind of jotted down. Mm -hmm. Those who claim to worship the Creator do it on their own terms. Mm -hmm. This is what Cain did. Mm -hmm. Cain decided he was going to bring the sacrifice he, he wanted, wanted to bring. Mm -hmm. Not what was prescribed. And I'll venture to say this. I really believe that that um, event was possibly a Passover because it's dealing with blood. It's about bringing a sacrifice that's acceptable. Mm -hmm. It's not like a free will offering, per se, where you bring whatever you want. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So because it was dealing with blood, I, I have the sense that it may have been a Passover. Mm -hmm. And it was a covenantal contract that was supposed to be enacted, like we do every year at this time. We got next week Passover coming up. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to partake of the blood, you know, to renew the contract. Mm -hmm. Well, 
Cain apparently didn't want to renew the contract on the terms that Yahweh had specified. He wanted to do it on his terms. Yes. Well, that's too much for Cain. Somebody who has the nature of Cain doesn't want to do it the way Yahweh or Yahshua says. They want to do it their way. And you're going to accept what I give you. Now, that's arrogance. That's arrogance. Just say, say you, you, your business, and you bring somebody in, and you train them how you want this particular right. job done. And they tell you, no. Right. I'm going to do it this way. Right. <laughs> it, it, that's basically what... The spirit of Cain is ruling in people to this day, even right. at my job. You know, this is the way that they that it's been designed to do. No, I got a better way. I'm not going to do it that way. One of the policies, don't walk around with these earplugs on your ear out there. No, I'm going to put the earplugs right. in my ear. They're going to accept it. Up. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but this is the nature that has taken place, uh, not just in this generation. It's been in the world right but it's becoming more uh intense it, now it, 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 well we can see it now because of the technology mm -hmm. but it's always been always all been. over the You're world right. because sodom and gomorrah can show you mm -hmm. in the bible mm -hmm. and then you leave and you go through the different nation you see all kind of sin uh the sin when a woman and another woman agree to cook their child <laughs> So it's been horrific things that we're seeing through scriptures, but we can't visualize it. But now we're seeing it and we're in the midst of it. But it's right. been generations that had to live through worse than what we've been oh, seeing, yeah. you know. And, and, Although we're getting and, there. <laughs> and, 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 um, but we'll say this is the worst is ever been. Oh, yeah. Um, you should sure say you thought all those people at the tower a Babel fell on were, were sinners above all. Did you think that? Mm -hmm. huh? You know, so so it's so many examples in there that all this stuff was written that you flee from your outer tree. You flee from all the stuff that you were doing. And yet we're right here with the same characteristics that we refuse to hear. Right. Yeah. So Cain offered what he thought was good enough. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's what that's what people with the nature of Cain does. They're not, it, the intent is not to please, but to do the little as possible and seem to get away with that. You know? Mm -hmm. And um, the, the arrogance, you know, what struck me about that part was how arrogant do you have to be to think that you can become come before the creator of heaven and earth mm -hmm. and say, here, that's what I'm giving you, and you better like it. Mm -hmm. That's pretty arrogant. Mm -hmm. Instead of, I have to assume that in the text when it says an acceptable sacrifice, Yahweh had already instructed the both of them for this ceremony, this is what's an acceptable sacrifice. Mm-hmm. So I have to assume that Cain knew what was expected of him, but he wasn't going to comply. It's, I'm just going to give you what I want to give you. I don't want to go the extra effort. That's why it was so personal to me, John, because I was that person in my relationships. This got to be good enough for you. Uh, me being faithful uh, uh, ain't going to be the, be that thing for you. Me being that honorable person, no. Mm -hmm. You got to accept this riotous person, this unfaithful person. This this the one that you got to accept. Right. You know, and so it passed down. Even with kids, you know, we have kids. You going to either accept me like this and, and, and I'm not going to abide by your rules. And a lot of us, we do that. Mm -hmm. We just accept them open arms how they want to live how they choose and we do that but we're doing they're doing the same thing that he's asking Yahweh to do right we're doing the same exact thing we do mm -hmm. nothing's new under the sun right. so the next point that that um, that came to mind is when you look at Yahweh's instruction for a um, sacrifice or an offering or something like that in this particular case, what I believe Cain was should have done, because he was a tiller of the ground, 
So crops were not an acceptable sacrifice. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was supposed to be an animal. Mm -hmm. I believe it was probably a lamb. Mm -hmm. Now, Abel was a, was a keeper of the sheep. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what I believe is, is that Cain should have gone to his brother and say, look, how much of my crops do you want for me to purchase a lamb from your flock mm -hmm. that's without spot or blemish? I don't want one that's better than the one you're giving to Yahweh because you, you, you cultivated that. But give me the next one that's acceptable, you know, to Yahweh. And, you know, Abel would have said, well, I want so many bushels of whatever to redeem a lamb from my flock so that we could go together and offer our two lambs to Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. That's what Cain should have done. But that's too much for somebody who has the nature of Cain, for the spirit of Cain, or the mark of Cain. And the mark of Cain is the spirit or the nature of Cain. You could see, what does it say? You will know them by their fruits, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So when I see somebody who operates like that, I say, he's got, he's got the nature of Cain, full blown, you know, or the mark of Cain. You, I'm, I've marked him as a person that has the nature of Cain. Then he became a competitor. Yeah, right. And trying to get Yahweh to believe that mm -hmm. his sacrifice is just as righteous as Abel's. Oh even though he was instructed what was required of him. Mm -hmm. But it was too much for Cain mm -hmm. to go to Abel. Because mm -hmm. what has he got to do? First of all, he's got a reason inside his mind that I want to honor Yahweh by bringing the right sacrifice. Well, he failed that one, right? Number two, I got to go to my brother and redeem my crops to get a lamb from him so that I do have an acceptable sacrifice. Mm-hmm. And he failed to do that because why? Because he was jealous of his brother. Because mm -hmm. Yahweh accepted Abel, but he didn't accept Cain. Mm -hmm. So this anger was festering inside of Cain. Because he could not, or I wouldn't say could, he chose not to measure up to the standard that Yahweh had put him to. He just was not going to comply. So that was too much for him to go to Abel to submit himself to his brother to take something that his brother bred that was acceptable and redeem that for himself so that he could stay in covenant with Yahweh. John, how many uh, kids today that are jealous of the other sibling because right. they think that the parent favors Favorite. one above the right. other, that they don't even like their own sister or yeah. their own brother. Mm -hmm. You know, and so these things, I'm telling you, it's so deceptive that without the knowledge, you can't teach it uh, to your children. The things that Israel were commanded to teach to their children and tell their children to teach it that they'll know the works of Yahweh, you know, because somewhere in the midst, even wickedness started coming up out of Israel. It was already there, but then they started in the midst that one now, if one accepts Yeshua, they hate it and they're cast off as like, like, a, like a child. Where did that teaching come from? You know, when I'm doing something good. I'm teaching something good. I'm, I'm learning something that's good. I'm learning not to hate. You know, when, when you've been raised up in a religion that teaches you to hate, if they're not like you, mm -hmm. in the flesh now, mm -hmm. not the works. And so I, I, it, this, this jealousy spirit that you're talking about, it's come up from the beginning. And it's still here. Yeah, we're yeah. not told in the text how yeah. long this went on. Right. But this was the, the culmination of maybe many years of this. Who knows how many years Cain kept trying to offer the same thing until finally this was it. Uh-huh. By one man, sin entered into right. the world. Right. Sin right. came right. in that right. day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So uh, next point is Cain becomes jealous of Abel's sacrifice. So now the sacrifice is made mm -hmm. and Cain level of anger 
has now risen to a new level. Mm -hmm. See, before he was just jealous Mm -hmm. and he was not happy with the fact that Yahweh's way compels him to go to his brother to get a proper animal for a proper sacrifice. No, I'm not going to do that. Mm -hmm. But now the ceremony commences. Abel sacrifices a lamb. Yahweh is pleased with that sacrifice and gazes at it with amazement. Mm -hmm. If you look at it in the Hebrew, Mm -hmm. okay? But Cain becomes extremely jealous when he sees Yahweh's reaction. So that goes back to what you're saying about the siblings, Mm -hmm. where the one sibling gets rewarded by the parents and the other one becomes more embittered Mm -hmm. when they see that. And that's what happened here. So uh, now Cain is filled with the spirit of anger. Mm -hmm. Now we're at a really super high peak level where something is going to happen. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, and this is what I'm seeing out there in the world today with people with the nature of Cain who are out on the streets, destroying property, destroying people's lives, killing people, beating people. You know, we're getting to where it was just before the flood, Mm -hmm. where the evil of man is, is so evil continuously that Yahweh just can't look the other way anymore. He's just gratified to go out on the street and kill somebody because he's so angry with himself. And he can't see a way out. So that creates a problem for us in a way or creates a dilemma because then you have to start choosing who you can become friendship, have friendships with. Mm -hmm. You know, because the scripture says friendship with the world is enmity with Yahweh, Mm -hmm. which we find in the book of James. So when you're a believer... And you're trying not to have the nature of Cain, but you got people around you that have the nature of Cain and they're a constant thorn in your side all the time. You certainly can't go sit down with them and be friends with them. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a real conflict, but that doesn't mean you can't mentor them either or keep trying to point them in the right direction. Sort of being like an Abel, right? Mm -hmm. Abel kept setting the right example Mm -hmm. in the presence of Cain. Mm -hmm. But it got to a point where that example became Abel's greatest enemy in the sense that Cain got so angry with it, now he's going to kill him. They can only stand so much righteousness and light in their presence. Mm -hmm. So either they're going to conform or they're going to want to kill you. That's where it comes to. Something has to be done. See, it goes back to the beginning. Choose your sacrifice or your sacrifice will choose you. Mm -hmm. So if you choose to accept the sacrifice that Yahweh has mandated that you should become, which is a sacrifice to him, which is abiding in all the things that he tells you to do, or by default, Satan's sacrifice takes over your life and compels you to want to kill other people, Mm -hmm. either with your mouth or literally, or through other deeds. So... These are the characteristics that mark the nature of Cain. This is how you know them because you know them by these kinds of fruits. Mm -hmm. And there, I mean, there's a whole lot more adjectives I could have thrown in here, but this would have got really, really long. Right. So, you know, I don't want to go that long with it, but you can go and look in the scriptures and see um, those who went by the nature of Cain. Mm -hmm. They're rebellious. They're angry. They're filled with vitriol. Um, I mean, I can just go on down the list. They're never happy. Mm-hmm. These are people who are never happy. Mm-hmm. And they indulge in lifestyles that are not good. All right. So now we get into the part where it's Yahweh's remedy. Mm-hmm. So for those listening out there who have marked themselves as, uh, by acknowledging, I'm guilty of this, I'm guilty of this, and mm-hmm. I'm guilty of that, and I need to do something with it. Repent. This is a sacrifice mm-hmm. I've been living my whole life. I don't like it. Mm-hmm. I don't want to live like that anymore. I want to become a different sacrifice. The one that Yahweh chose and Yahshua chose for me. Mm-hmm. I want to come into compliance like we read in those scriptures with those Gentiles who decide that when they hear the name of Yahweh, they want that honor and they want that authority and they want that character mm-hmm. to transform their lives. So point number one is Yahweh asked Cain to do well, to do well, 
to be happy and to be content. Mm -hmm. There's a method for that. There's a vehicle that gets you there. There's a medicine. There's a prescription mm -hmm. for that. Mm -hmm. So that's what that's what he's trying to get his attention. Get it off your anger. Get it off all that stuff. And this is what you should be focused on. Mm -hmm. You know. So what you what you focus on is what you chase after in this life. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you focus on the misery and the anger and the vitriol and the bitterness and the resentment and 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 all those kinds of things, well, that's what you're going to get if those are the seeds that you plant in the ground. But he's telling him to be focused on being happy and content. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to show you how we could do that. So the next point is doing this will mean he is accepted and elevated to a level of character and dignity. Mm hmm. Which goes back to the verses we read in the beginning. Mm -hmm. That's what they want. They want dignity and character. Well, for that, you got to keep the commandments. You got to. You can't say, I'm only going to keep the last six commandments, and I'm going to reject the first four, or I'm going to rearrange them and do them the way I want to do it on my terms. Did that sound familiar? Mm -hmm. Like Cain's sacrifice? Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you what I want to give you, and you're going to like it? Uh-uh. Yahweh don't 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 roll that way. No, he don't. So the next point is Yahweh explains habitual sinfulness. I think you brought it up earlier. Is like a wild animal waiting at your door to pounce on you. It's just waiting for an opportunity. Satan has already got something at your front door that when you open it, bam! It jumps right on you. You didn't even see it coming. Mm -hmm. But if you're walking with Yahshua and you're walking in the truthfulness of his word and the sincerity of his word, the spirit will alert you mm -hmm. to the animal that's crouching at your front door as an opportunity to sin. And it, it, even if you can't hear it sometimes, like um, Satan uh, told Yahweh about Job, you got a hedge around him. Uh -huh. I can't get to uh -huh. him. He's hedged you. He's got a hedge. A lot of times, all of us, we stand because of Yahweh's hedge. It's so much stuff the enemy could have did to wipe us out of here. But it's because of that hedge and protection he has over us that helps us. Not because we're so great, but because of his mercy. You know, it's funny you brought that up because a few weeks ago I was watching a video down in Africa. There's a tribe that lives out in the plains where there's lions and mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. And a guy went to visit, uh, do a little documentary on the community. And it's very interesting because what they do is they take trees and they strip the branches off. So it's like a stick. And they cut it to a point like a spear. Yeah, right. I'm going to say these things are maybe eight feet tall, I guess. And what they do is they have huts. And what they do is they build this wall of spiked trees laying on top of each other mm -hmm. to make a fence all around. And it's got a little tiny hole that they crawl through. Mm -hmm. Then there's another circle. They build the same thing with bigger sticks. Okay. Going around that, and the entrance is a small hole also, but it's on the opposite side of where the first one is. Mm -hmm. Then there's a third and bigger one that goes all the way around that has a little hole that's on the opposite side of that. Mm -hmm. and the point, what they were saying is lions can't get over the fence because it's got these spikes, and they're too big to go through these little holes. And if they happen to get in, it's too confusing for them to go around this maze mm -hmm. to get themselves into the little community where they could eat people. Mm -hmm. So that, to me, was a picture of like what you're yeah. saying, that Yahweh builds yeah. these hedges mm -hmm. around us. All right, moving on. Uh, another point is Yahweh explains habitual sin. Oh, I'm sorry, we already did that. Cain has the power to rule over sin, but chooses not to. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, the nature of Cain is a choice. Mm -hmm. You either want to live that way or you want to live the way that Yahweh has required of you to be a sacrifice for. Right. Either way, you're a sacrifice. Yes. You're either going to die at the end during, if, I mean, if you're assuming you live through the tribulation, you're either going to die because you're going to accept the mark of Cain, mm -hmm. I mean, the mark of the beast, because mm -hmm. uh, that's where it will lead you to. And you're either going to die there because you can't repent. And now that mark that was in you is sealed permanently mm. and you can't repent. Or you're going to have the mark of Yahweh, 
which is on your forehead, which is his name, mm -hmm. is marked on your forehead. Well, if you have animosity towards the name of Yahweh or Yahshua, mm -hmm. why would he mark a person who has anger and vitriol and is non-compliant mm -hmm. to that name? Mm -hmm. He won't. He won't. That's exactly right. He won't. So the next point is, despite corrections from Yahweh, Cain acts out his uncontrolled aggression anyway. Mm -hmm. How many times do you have to correct a person in a situation where you caught them in something and you're correcting them and you can see in their face they're caught with their pants down. They can't wiggle out of it. They know that they're guilty of it and you got them pinned, but they become aggressive anyway, and they try to justify their position. I mean, we see that in everyday life when mm -hmm. we have confrontations with people, and they just don't want to be honest, mm -hmm. you know? So this is what, you know, he was doing when Yahweh was trying to give him the remedy. This was his, his kind of his response. So once caught, the spirit of Cain will try to conceal the guilt. Otherwise, I don't know what happened to my brother, right. my, my brother's keeper. Why are you bothering me with this? You don't try to hide it. Exactly. So mm -hmm. which means you've actually caught him in something. He's hoping you haven't figured that out yet. You, it, it's, still, it's still to this day when people go out there and murder somebody and they're on the camera, but they're in the courtroom saying it wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> you right, know? that's a good one. And I'm like, you on film. <laughs> yeah, your right. Your fingerprints, yeah. your phone there, yeah. your fingerprints there, everything there, but you threw away the gun, so it <laughs> yeah. wasn't you. But you know what oh, the line on. would be nowadays? Uh -huh. The way it would be is... I identify as non-binary when I did that. Now that I'm in the court, I'm back to being the person I was. So that person you saw there isn't the same me. person that I am yeah. now. <laughs> but this is how crazy mm -hmm. this world has gotten with its arguments to justify why they do what they do. That was Hyde. That wasn't Jekyll. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um the other thing is with Cain is uses self justification. Yahweh's telling him you're basically using self justification to assert your own righteousness in this matter. Mm -hmm. In other words, why should you be mad that I'm not bringing you a lamb? Let's assume mm -hmm. it's a lamb, mm -hmm. and I'm bringing you my crops. It's in my view, it's good enough. Mm -hmm. Why is it you can't accept that? Mm -hmm. And so Yahweh is saying you don't have a right to come before me. And plead your righteousness. Mm -hmm. I already told you in advance what the acceptable sacrifice was. You rejected that. And now you're trying to tell me I need to accept this like it is because you think it's right? I get people doing that to me all the time. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's about the time I go for the jugular vein. Because now you're thinking I'm stupid. Right. You know, now you're going to have a problem. So... Then he goes on to say, well, why am I responsible for another person's problem that I caused? See, Cain caused the problem, but why am I responsible for it? Mm -hmm. Finally, in this point five, Cain only shows remorse for his curse, but not for what he did. How many times do we see people like that? We catch them in something. We reprimand them. Mm-hmm. And they're not remorseful for what they did, but they're now mad because you're yeah. enacting punishment on them. Mm -hmm. This is the mind or the nature of the spirit of Cain. Yes. The mark of, that's what marks somebody who has the nature of Cain. Mm -hmm. Self-justification is a big one in this story. So let's go to point number six. Yahweh's curse is now pronounced. Mm-hmm. So point one is punishment is the sign. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for a sign or the mark of Cain, punishment is clearly a sign or an omen. Okay. Mm -hmm. He was banished to a land of refuge as well as his unregenerate nature. You will know them by the fruits. And also in Matthew 7, 15, Exam uh, in the Matthew person seven fifteen example, you'll know them by their fruits. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we know that in the Torah, Yahweh provided a land of refuge for somebody mm -hmm. who committed some sort of an offense 
and was fearful for his life. Mm -hmm. So he was allowed to go to a particular land and stay there until either a king or a high, I think it was a king, I don't remember, but at least a high priest who was ruling at the time dies. Mm -hmm. Then he would be allowed back to the other land, mm -hmm. okay? But the fact that Cain was banished to a land of refuge is a mark or a sign or an omen that he's guilty of something because he had to be separated from everybody else. See, John, that's even more uh, clear about this this doctrine of demons that they uh, teach about once saved, always saved. Okay, if he banished for what his did was his punishment being banished and he got to leave out of the garden. He got to leave out of the land that they even Adam had to leave right, out of it. Right. Huh? So what's going to be different about us today that wasn't different about, about him? Oh, he changed. He's changed since then, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. um, so you can't lose your place in his kingdom if you uh, go against his word, if you break his commandments. Right. So when we come across a person today that has the nature of Cain, we'll say, or the mark of Cain, whatever, mm -hmm. who's really, really evil. Mm -hmm. What do you do? You banish him from your life to stay somewhere else far away from you. I mean, it, that's a sign. The fact that you're way over there and I'm here mm -hmm. because that's the way I want it because I can't have you around me right. means you people should stay away from you. You're dangerous. Mm -hmm. What uh, for the life of me, it's easier for them to receive this because it speaks to their um, selfishness. Right. It speaks to their selfishness. I'm going to do what I want to do. Right. He he uh, he. Uh, if he required it, as him requiring, I don't have to do it because he said, if I just say this, that's it. It's all over with. There's nothing else required of me. Oh yeah, it's a lot more required. So you become a sacrifice of Satan mm -hmm. in that state. You've relegated yourself to that position. It deceiving. He's That's still the end deceiving. He's still deceiving people. Uh, to, he's, he hasn't stopped. He hasn't been taken out of the way yet. Right. So he's still deceiving. So like you, you brought up the, the earlier about you when you were in prison. Mm -hmm. You know. So you know we both used to preach in the prisons. So mm -hmm. I understand as well. When I go into the prison and have to speak and I see all the 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 inmates. To me, that's a mark or a sign mm -hmm. that you're in this place because you did something that violated law. Mm -hmm. So that to me, that place is symbolic of a mark. It doesn't, I'm not, it, maybe Yahweh put a mark on Cain, a physical mark. I don't know. But the bottom line is, I didn't want to get caught up in the mark because it's speculation. Mm -hmm. But one thing for sure is we've gone through the characteristics of what the mark of Cain is as far as his nature. And that's the most important thing because the whole point of this exercise is to see that nature where it dwells in you. And do you have a desire to get it out? Mm -hmm. That's the point. And there's a bigger point to this that we're going to get into in a minute. Okay. But let me finish with this. So now Cain is cursed with bitterness. Mm -hmm. And we know the story of that because where he goes to till the ground, it doesn't yield what he wants, you know, because he cursed the ground mm -hmm. with, with Abel's blood. Mm -hmm. You made a sacrifice into the ground, which was an illegal sacrifice. Mm -hmm. So now the ground where you go is cursed. Mm -hmm. So the last point is in this point here um, in six is Cain will stagger through life, never attaining happiness and contentment, mm -hmm. which is what we said from the beginning when Yahweh tried to plead with him that you should be happy and content. But in the Hebrew, it's saying he will never attain happiness and contentment. Mm -hmm. No matter how much you're fighting to make your life work, it will not work because mm -hmm. if that plan was was something that would work, surely you would see the evidence of it by now. Mm -hmm. How long are you going to play that game before you recognize there's only one solution, which is the one that we already laid out that Yahweh had given here? Mm -hmm. Any comments on that? That's when you know that you're doing something wrong. Right. 
You know, when you know that you've done something out of jealousy, out of anger to somebody that you shouldn't have done and you was warned not to do it, you know, uh, the thing about Yahweh, he can break the curse, you know, and that's what he tells us. In order for the curse to get broken, you have to um, follow his instructions, you know, and, and a lot of people today, they are cursed people for life. Oh, they curse for life, you know, and <laughs> for me, it was said about me, the same thing, you know, that's it. I did so much bad stuff. That's it. You know, and ain't no way that he's going to be right. this You're person. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. And, and a lot of times in life, it, it seemed like that, you know, but Yahweh has always shown his faithfulness to me. And anybody can get caught into this bitterness, into anger, into jealousy, but know that you have control over it through the word of Yahweh. That's the only thing that's going to defeat it. That's the only thing that's going to wipe it away. And to this day, this very day, the blood of Yeshua is still doing its cleansing work in me. And, and I have to look at it. I have to look at it. That's why I say this topic makes it personal for me yeah, and yeah, makes me yeah. watch my and guard my steps even a little closer. Each time we sit down to have a discussion, you know, I, I pray that it, it um, blesses somebody else, <clears throat> but it most certainly blesses me, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. And so it's food. It's food. It's water to my thirsty soul when we sit down because it shows me the mercy of Yahweh and the power of Yahweh in my life, how he just sustains me from day to day. And, and it's not that somebody else over there is having a rough time or not. It's that I'm telling you, it can be better. Mm -hmm. It can get better. You know, we growing. We still here. We still got a chance. Yeah, you know, I'm remind you what you said earlier. I'm reminded about the anger stuff. I remember when I was a younger guy, one situation in particular. It may sound funny, but it really wasn't funny. But it kind of is funny now. Mm -hmm. um, one day I was repairing my car. I don't I remember if I was taking out the alternator or something, and I couldn't get the wrench to break loose one last bolt to get the part out. Mm -hmm. And I got so mad, I was cussing up a storm. My wife was hiding in the house. She knows not to be <laughs> around me when I got like that. And I'm yelling and I'm screaming in the neighborhood like I was a lunatic, mm -hmm. you know? And yet in the moment, I knew I was cra being crazy, but I had to act it out, mm -hmm. you know? Because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm trying to think now about the compulsive b disorder that the nature of Cain has on a person. Yes. And I got so mad, I grabbed that wrench and I threw it all the way down the street. And it landed in some bushes somewhere in somebody else's house. And I'm just cussing up a storm left and right. And then finally, when I finally calmed down to the point where I still got the part, got to come out. I got to find some way to deal with this, mm -hmm. you know. So I went down the street looking in the bushes for the tool, and I couldn't find it. <laughs> now I started screaming and yelling and cussing about that, and people are like, what's wrong with him, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm digging through the bushes, and I can't, I, mean, I'm, I almost want to go say it now, but I can't say it now. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, I'm just yelling and screaming and cussing left and right because now I've lost the tool, mm -hmm. you know. The tool that won't get it out, but it's, I'm mad with the tool now. So finally, I found the tool and, you know, I finally calmed down. But it's a the point that I want to make is that kind of anger, mm -hmm. the rage, when you're in that moment, it's not rational to stop. You can't, it's like once you set a, a forest fire, mm -hmm. you can't stop it. It just rages through like a flaming fire and sets everything on fire. Like somebody poured gasoline all over it and it just explodes. Mm -hmm. And so you're nowhere near in a state of mind to control yourself, you know? Yes. So I'm just thankful that Yashua over the years has helped me to learn how to deal with that anger. Now, I still get angry about some things. I control it a whole lot better, mm -hmm. but that's because... 
now I know that's the other danger here is when you learn about the commandments of Yahweh mm -hmm. and you understand the ramifications of breaking those commandments and you watch people, especially people who claim to be believers, mm -hmm. breaking those commandments willfully and you point it out and they don't want to do it. That's about the time I want to kill. Mm -hmm. That's about the time I want to kill them. And they want to kill you for telling them. And they want to kill me, uh, <laughs> maybe more so. I don't know. I think my will is pretty strong. I don't think they could outdo me in that. But my point is, is that now, now it kind of takes a weird shift in another direction. Mm -hmm. Because maybe you kind of conquered the anger out there in the world after all these years. But now you got to be careful about righteous indignation that it doesn't go too far off the pendulum mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because that can happen in the faith as well. So that same nature of Cain can mix with self-righteousness, which comes from a righteousness in the law that clearly says this person's guilty, but you're going way overboard and taking retribution mm -hmm. instead of Yahweh telling you what the proper uh, response should be to that person in that situation. Mm -hmm. And so now you're in more trouble than the person who caused that problem in the first place. Mm -hmm. And now you're at fault, more so than the person who committed the violation in the first place. Yeah. It gets hairy. Mm -hmm. That's my point. It this. does. It does. Because uh, I see it like in different things where, where somebody might be angry with somebody that promised them something and they didn't keep the promise. And now you want to you wanna hurt them. When it's just easy to just say, okay, you ain't let me go on with my life. But you want to find ways to punish them yourself. And and you never get happy because no. you invest in your time. You never get mm -hmm. free because you invest in your time fighting a war that's over with. It was over with the day that, that the person didn't keep their word to you. You lost that battle, so move on. Mm -hmm. They gone. They they consider you dead, but you're still living. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a lot of things in our past that could still, we could still be entangled of, but look how far we've come. You know, that those things are dead to us and we're dead to those things that they have no more power over us. And a lot of people are still walking around in the power of the past and holding in all of this bitterness that the spirit of Cain brings, you know, and that bitterness caused you to be angry and anger caused you to try to take some kind of retribution out on this individual person. And these things are of real you know and mm -hmm. people who are claiming that they want to come out of the world and you need to start paying attention to the actions and the course that they are taking right now yeah at the end of the day when you're operating like that you you become elohim in that mm -hmm. moment you decide what's right and wrong yeah, exactly. not what Yahweh had prescribed like he did to Cain in the beginning exactly so point number 7 the final phase of the mark of Cain means that you eventually get assimilated into the mark of the beast. Mm. That's the final sealing. When mm -hmm. you look in the book of Revelation, um, you see that there's two sealings mm -hmm. that finalize the end of the age. So if you want, the, the point of this exercise today is, if you want to get to that point mm -hmm. where you receive the mark of the cane, there's a path, there's a way to get there. Mm -hmm. And the way that you can be assured that you're going to get there is maintain the mark of of the nature of Cain mm -hmm. and operating in your dominancy in your life, and there's no resistance to it. Just mm -hmm. go down that path, and you will receive the mark of the beast. Mm -hmm. Because the dichotomy of that, the opposite of that, is, is that those who are malleable, those who can be molded and shaped by Yahweh's spirit, who are willing to be repenting, like the ones we read in the beginning, those Gentiles that come mm -hmm. at the end times because of Yahweh's name, those are the ones that are going to have the seal of Yahweh on their foreheads. Mm -hmm. And they're going to be protected. And so at that, I think it's roughly like the last five months of the tribulation. They get sealed. Each mm -hmm. side gets sealed. So the side that's sealed gets protected from the plagues, and the sign that has the mark of the beast winds up having the plagues mm -hmm. that Yahweh pours out with his bold judgments 
on the nations during that time who were shaking their feast fist at Yahweh and at the Lamb in total defiance. Like saying, I don't care that I got all these boils on me and stuff. I won't acknowledge you. I won't accept you. Mm -hmm. They can't. They've been given over to a debased mind. Mm -hmm. So point number one, the mark of Cain rules the earth. Unlike in the pre-flood, he was relegated to a small land. So in the beginning, um, the Cain was sent to a land by himself, not to mix with a regular society. Mm -hmm. But over a period of time, I went through this in the Genesis series, over a period of time, the descendants of Seth began to intermingle with the seed of Cain, mm -hmm. the, the daughters of, and the sons of men. And so when they mingled, you started having a mix. Mm -hmm. And now they wound up taking over the pre-flood era to where they're destroying people left and right, to where Yahweh said, you know, I can't, the, the, the hearts of men is only evil continually. Mm -hmm. So he sends a flood on the earth to wipe it all out. So in the end, in the beginning, we had we've had pretty much ah, there are hiccups, sure, but for the most part, we've recent times had a fairly stable. Well, we'll say in this country, mm -hmm. we had commandments and laws that were based on the commandments, somewhat that gave somewhat of a balance in the scales of justice, not completely, uh, but better than many other nations. We'll say it that way. But now we're entering into a time where those scales are way, way off and that the law is being done away with and it's being substituted by a new law, mm -hmm. which is lawlessness. Mm -hmm. And they're persecuting people who have done nothing wrong because that they're the ones in control. So now they're starting to dominate the whole earth with this stuff and it's causing upheavals all over the earth. So those who, who are the mark of Cain are taking over the earth. This is where we're going. So those people out there that are trying to lead a, say, a moral life, okay, are going to have to start really getting serious about what does that mean for you? Mm -hmm. Because you're being squeezed more and more and more, and the pressure on you is going to be immense as time goes on here because things are falling apart pretty quick. And pretty soon you're going to get singled out, and you're going to have to really decide once and for all you're in this camp or you're in this camp. And you're going to have to be willing to pay the price for it. Um, one of the characteristics of the mark of the cane that we're going to see at this time is that those who have the mark of the nature of Cain speak evil of those who worship Yahweh mm -hmm. and Yahshua. Mm -hmm. See, right now, you're starting to see them kind of go after Christians. Okay, Christians are starting to kind of become like the hit group that these groups are coming after. But I've said for years, that's how it's going to be. It's going to start off with like Catholics and Protestants and, you know, basic Christians. And eventually they're going to come after the, the woman that is the bride to be. Mm -hmm. And she's the one that keeps the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. These other groups do not keep the Ten Commandments. They stay behind. They're going to have to go through the tribulation, and they're going to have to be purified that way. And most of them are going to lose their life. Mm -hmm. But the woman who's keeping the Ten Commandments and have the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach, mm -hmm. which is the spirit of prophecy, is the one that goes to the place of safety mm -hmm. and is protected from the face or the presence of the serpent. Mm -hmm. And is nourished for three and a half years and is prepped to become the bride of Messiah. Mm -hmm. So, again, you're going to have to choose which one do you want to be. Mm -hmm. And everybody's going to have to make that choice. Next point, um, actually, you, I think I already kind of covered that. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, they go to a place to say, the last point is, in contrast, the mark of Yahweh is on the foreheads of his people. Mm -hmm. So that's really it. I mean, there, there is no... There is no middle of the road that you can rely on that you can say, well, I'm not going to be with this one. I'm going to be with that one. This whole thing is squeezing down now. It's squeezing down. And I really firmly believe that as time goes on here, and I think it's going to accelerate, we're going to start to see more and more people starting to say, okay, I've seen enough. I've had enough. This is it. 
I, I can't take it no more. I've got to make a decision. I put it off. I, I think you've been saying this, that, John, there's no way that people can be watching our videos all this time. Mm -hmm. And even though they don't respond to anything, there's no way they can walk away from this and not get these things out of this. Mm -hmm. They got to be holding on to this. And at some point, they're going to make a decision. And these, these forces that are exerting this pressure on all these people, there's going to be certain sheep that are going to have to come out and make that decision once and for all. Mm -hmm. And that's where I think this is going to go. So, like it said from the beginning, mm -hmm. choose your sacrifice or your sacrifice is going to choose you. Yes. Either you decide to die to the self and keep Yahweh's commandments. That means keeping the Sabbath. And as these people do, they call on Yahweh's name. Mm -hmm. They stop calling him God. Lord, Jesus, uh, Adonai, all these other names that Yahweh says not to call me by those names. Mm -hmm. This is my name. Please call me by my name. Mm -hmm. That's honoring the third commandment. Mm -hmm. Yahshua said to, to Yahweh in his final prayers, he says, Abba, Father, these men whom you've given me out of the world, I have revealed your name to them. Mm -hmm. I've entrusted your name to them because I know they're now my friends and I can hand them over to you and I can trust them with your name. Yeah, they got they got they got the real confused out there, John. But all of them quote the scripture, if my people who are called by my name, yeah, well, how many names you called by out there? Mm-hmm. You know, and every one of those my names, and every one of those names by my name. And if you every one of those names, if you mm -hmm. ask the person. That name you're using, how would you define that? Mm -hmm. And they'll tell you. And that definition is complete defiance against what Yahweh says he is in the scriptures. That's religion. This is not religion. Mm -hmm. This is true spiritual walk mm -hmm. according to his prescription, which he tried to get Cain to follow, and he refused. Mm -hmm. Don't be one of those ones that refuses. Yes. So you can wrap it up. Well, I just thank Yahweh for his mercy and his grace. And I just want to end up with this a story about the last, what, six months of my life dealing with the spirit of Cain. I've been at this job for over 25 years, you know, and Yahweh showed me how that when I thought life was over, I can look back well over 25 years ago since he delivered me and that I would be in this one place I would actually be stable in one place, but it's so much I had to endure as to mm -hmm. um, staying at this place, so much I had to suffer through. And so recently, I was called up to the office and said that they were going to take me out of my position. I had the choice to either step down or they were going to take it, mm -hmm. but it was a done deal. And I said, well, take it because I done nothing deserving for them to take it. But in their eyes, they were telling me I wasn't good enough. I shouldn't have been there. And why I got there, they can't understand how I got there. And they was determined to move me. I wasn't the person who was really the person to be responsible for whatever uh, was going wrong with the department. I might have had some parts in it that I could have uh, taken care of, but I was taking care of the parts that I was supposed to take care of. But what he was showing me, he was showing me the hearts, the wickedness that can be in the hearts of people who profess to be good hearted people. Well, why would you choose to hurt someone when you in the position to help them? If it was something I was liking, it was something I didn't know. Why would you let it go so many years and not come in and try to help me get to a better place? So Yahweh is showing me that the spirit of Cain, it exists all throughout the workforce. Mm -hmm. But if you hold on and you stay as able state, you just stay faithful. Though they mm -hmm. kill you, Yahweh will see your blood. 
Mm -hmm. And so we're coming up to Passover and the blood, the blood is already on the doorposts of our heart. Though they slay me, yet will I praise him. And so we're dealing, I'm dealing with these people and I'm watching people uh, take sides against Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Why do they hate me so much? Because I love him. Why do they hate me so much? Because I try to be faithful to him. Why do they hate me so much? Yeah, they'll say they don't hate me, but your actions. Mm -hmm. huh? I'm sure Cain said he loved Abel, but look at his actions. Mm -hmm. You can't tell me something out of your mouth and you're doing a different thing with your words. How just recognize the spirit of Cain that's uh, manifesting himself in your everyday life. That's all I'm asking people. Just ask and begin to separate yourself. Begin to call on that name that has honor and character and dignity. Begin to call on him and trust on him and believe him and he will deliver you from your enemies. That's my prayer. Prayer. That's my hope. And that is the glory of Yahweh that's still in this world. That's still, although people are saying it's suppressed and it's trying to sh make you think he's over here, he's over there. No, he's still sitting on his throne. Bow your heads and lift up your hands to his throne and call on him for all of your help. But Shem Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. Amen. Yes. Baruch Hashem. And with that, we bid you all shalom. Thank you for joining in. Until the next time. Yes, thank you.